We live like a four-wheel drive. Play upon the lush to the Uno. I got my dog Diz with me. Disaster up in here. And we are amongst Brooklyn royalty. You feel me? One of the dopest, most original, most distinguishing voices, cadence, deliveries, punchlines, and styles in hip hop history by partner, the Rock Ness Monster himself. You feel me? Big oh. Rock. Yeah. One half of Helter Skelter. Right. One fifth of the Fab Five. Oh, R.P. Um, Sean Price. Yeah, yeah. Peace. And of course, uh, a member of the illustrious Boot Camp Click. Right. How you feeling, Rock? I'm feeling like a villain. I'm glad to be here, man. Man, it's crazy. This is our first time actually meeting right. in person. But you know, I'm gonna I'm 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 just tell you something embarrassing right quick. Go crazy. I didn't even recognize you at first, Diz. Like, Damn. Like, you, this, you, 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 it's crazy. Are you extra tan? You extra fit? So what's going on right now? <laughs> you know, I'm, you do you know the first time we met? Yeah, it was you that. Remember? Because I was, was going to keep that till somewhere in the middle. <laughs> but like, if you go set it off, Rock, let's fucking go. Because I, you know, yeah. I met you in Brooklyn. Right. We met. We did meet that night. Right. At the battle event. Yeah. You was at my battle when yeah. I went when out and I battled. You battled Swave. That was. Oh, I'm he was at the Swave battle. Dog, listen to me. When mm -hmm. I met him, you gotta know something else too like i don't know if i got to tell you this on the spot but like so again like i don't mean to circle this back into me before we get into it <laughs> yeah okay. you do but you like i always got to do this you mm -hmm. know i was really young in 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 lebanon and beirut when i got put on the hip-hop and i got few selection of cds and certain people that put me on and amongst these cds mm -hmm. the first time i heard you mm -hmm. was the dj clue uh, album with you and the boot yeah. camp click and the record come on yeah. and that shit was such a big like part of my shit like to even when i came to america it was one of my soundtracks like a playlist that i listened to while i was traveling and it was part of my whole coming here yeah, shit come you know what I'm saying? On. yeah see, see, come, come on, on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah bcc yeah. mfc yeah. so so uh that verse is hard as fuck, and that verse really inspired me because I actually, for a while, took a lot of influence from how you switched your shit around. So when I would freestyle, because it was back on beats back then, we mm. wasn't acapella right. it. Right. I would try to twist my shit a lot and give it that little rock-like flavor to it. But, so when I met man. you, it was crazy. I met you, but I don't know if you remember this. I, look, I didn't remember me. I didn't because I look. That was also the first night. Like that was one of the first battle events I went to, right? And. Yeah, 2010. Yeah, so like like, like me and Swave became close. We, me and Swave met right, before then. Swave, yeah. It's my bro like we we brothers now. You understand what right. I'm saying? But like we 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 really connected that day. You know what I'm saying? And I watched this battle, and and you know I was rooting for Swave. Obviously, right? You know? It was Brooklyn against. You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? I was out there in the trenches with you, right. motherfuckers. And you seen how hard I had. Right. It. You got to right. see firsthand because people today they don't be knowing. They be saying like, oh, nah, it was oh, you don't want to go to New York. You scared. First of all, I'm not scared to battle in these environments because they're now corporate environments and they're really <laughs> protected and they're very like money behind them. The shit I was at with you, we was under a bridge. Yep. There was like no lights out yep. there. Yeah. It was like a dark it little was scary. area. <laughs> and, and Sway worked that scary situation into his bars too. He was like, it's a reason this is taking place way out in the booms. Yeah, like yeah. he started it's with a reason that. You remember that. This shit got all my goons and shit. And, and, oh my God. It's a reason this event is called Body Bag Season. Right. And if you feeling left out, then you probably, probably that reason. reason. Yeah. Like that was, he had to stand up to some heat. Not you remembering the bars. Hey, though. Damn, that's you gotta, you no, gotta. Real, that's, uh, that was actually one of my favorite battles, and it was early in the game. You remember all of that early shit, you know what I'm saying? Before right, it gets saturated with all of the you know talk I mean? that shit. Come on, yeah. man, saturated. <laughs> and as a, you know, just like, just like you said, we remember our early introduction to to hip hop, and that's mm -hmm. like, you know, that y'all style is my favorite style of hip hop. That mm, mid 90s, right, hardcore, boom bap shit, like uh, Nocturnal, one of the greatest albums. Thank you, man, in, I appreciate it. In hip hop history. Do you believe the source gave that three and a half mic? No, that's that's an egregious. Yeah, they they did they did the, the Shining by Smith & Wesson also got three and a half. Yeah. They, did they have something against y'all? I don't, I don't think know. the source just don't get it right. I don't about. know. Like, the sources I mean, don't get they it right. gave Nas the right amount of mics when they, you know, that first album was a five mic album. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, yeah, right, they right. got it right sometimes, but. Yeah, sometimes. 
they gave Magnum Force three mics. Yeah. Like that shit almost brung tears to my eyes in real life because it right. meant it meant so much. And I remember being on the radio, me and Sean P, we was at a radio station in Atlanta. It might have been Ludacris before Luda was actually a rapper. My memory ain't that he was, good, when though. Because he was a, a he DJ. Was, right. Somebody in that radio station handed me that article, handed me that source, and I saw that shit. And I don't even know, I don't know how I got through that interview. Because I wanted to fight somebody, but it wasn't nobody to fight. You understand what I'm saying? It was, it was, it was terrible. No, disrespecting. I was scarred. I, I always kind of had a feeling that there was an agenda at that time to kind of bring it back to the less aggressive style. You know, before that, it, it's you raise a very good point. I feel like that's, I feel like that's a continuing, like that's oh, I don't know when it started, but right. at some point it started, and it's always been, hip hop has always been at war with itself. Like it would be like the gritty versus the pretty, yeah. right? And and the industry wants the pretty to win. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Because the pretty is less aggressive, you know, it's, it's less threatening, it's shinier, you know, uh, it feels more mainstream, you know what I'm saying? More, right, right. more accessible to, to, to more fan bases and all of that, right? And so for years, you watch, I've watched tons of our favorite artists, the biggest ones, mm -hmm. start out gritty. Yeah. And then they kind of, yeah. Right. Look and at Ja Rule. Look, look, like, look, look, right. Look. Man, Veni, Veni Viti, Veti Vici, right? I mean, that, yeah, that album was yeah. crazy I mean, different than what he ended I mean, up look doing. at 50 Cent. Like, yeah, his right. first, you know, Get Rich or Die Trying, he went diamond, being the filthiest nigga we seen in a, in, in oh, God. you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> all, all of the, all, all of the, the, the gutter shit. Every, every meisty, shysty, filthy thing he could think of to say and do in those raps he did. And we loved it. He went fucking diamond, mm -hmm. right? And see, and then the labels come and they trick you out your fans. They go, listen, we can get you open. Cool. We want to open you, open you up to an even bigger fan base. And they start bringing you, we got, put you on a record with Mariah Carey and a record on with 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 uh what's, right. with with uh what's what's her name uh. Taylor Swift or whoever, oh, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Whoever they could come up with that's bigger, you know, that, and that a different and, fan base. And a different fan base to try to and yeah, it might you it might widen up your fan base, but those songs don't bang the way your shit bang. And then and because of that, you know, the massacre sells less, you know what I'm saying? It's significantly less than Get rich or die trying, but it's not just the ma it's not fifty. This is so many niggas' story. I've been I, I have the data. You well, understand what I'm saying? Like, and even you guys, um, what's crazy is y'all would be able to get on R and B joints and still somehow yeah. be gutter. I mean, like, we didn't get on too many of them. Y'all was on that. Was it the SWV joint? No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> what's the story? That was Wu. That was Wu. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smith and Wesson landed on a. Um, a Mary J. Blige. That's joint. what it was. That's yeah. what it was. The yeah. Mary J. Yeah. yeah, that was. But Mary J. But yeah, I, I she, wouldn't put that in that category. She, keep, she keeps like, a gutter too. She's hip -hop. Yeah, she so. is. Mary J. is hip hop, man. Look, Mary <laughs> J. Re Mary, like I would, I went through a period, like you know, through my teenage years, where I was this angry ass teenager and all of it, and like I didn't listen to R and B. I didn't, I like, I didn't <laughs> listen to nothing. I think that's how we all came up with the hip hop, hardcore shit. hip hop. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. literally, Mary J. Blige broke. Through my fort, my, you the know, my Man fortress. Record. Nah, it wasn't even that. It was with real love real and all love. that because she was using hip hop beats. Right. So they tricked me. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And I heard and it, like between <laughs> that, between real love and reminisce, I fell in love with Mary J. Blige. She's still, like, she's still thing. the goat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, but um, not nah, even like beyond the the super shiny, jiggy, glossy records. Mm -hmm. I feel like before that in the source, if you look at a lot of the records that were getting five mics, mm -hmm. it was, you know, you were looking at like Tribe Called Quest mm -hmm. and a lot of them were, and I love those groups. Yeah. You gotta love Tribe and Daylight, yeah, yeah. but they were not talking about that grimy, gutter yeah. New yeah, York yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, Listen, in this country, no, this has been the case for a long time. If you black, you need to be compliant. Non-threatening, right? Non-threatening. You do. They don't. Let's just, your opinions better be the ones we give you, or it's going to be a problem. And it's a sad reality, but it, it, because it's sad, don't make it not a reality. Now, what do you think, though, when people talk about there's an agenda in the industry 
pushing towards mass, in, mass incarceration because you got mm. privatized. I heard, listen, I heard that theory. Like, you know, I saw the letter yeah. that whoever that person was, you know, I mean, like, I'm, I'm a big believer in a wise man knows that he knows nothing, right? So I know there's no way I'll ever know if that's true, but it's very plausible. It looks true. You understand what I'm saying? So to create context for those that might not know, there is this famous letter right. or, mm -hmm. you know, that's gone around that's, yeah. that was apparently a memo sent out to all the record executive record, owners. Yeah, says so somebody from inside the from inside the, in, the industry, inside of a record label, they, it was this, this letter and this meeting or whatever, this information, this general consensus that they all agree that we are going to take hip hop in a direction of crime and violence and all that because we have a deal with the prison industrial uh, organization Complex, yeah. or whatever, like, and and we we sending we going to send all you niggas to prison and we going to get kickback kickbacks. Well, here's a way to analyze it. Look at look at look at what sells today and how much it changed. Like, do you still get those conscious records like you used to on on, on the radio? Not. So, like, is 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 it people that changed and now they just want to do that, or is it that somebody is preying off that content, oh, I, making money? You know I what completely I'm saying? it's the yeah. latter. Yeah, of course. It's definitely the latter. I mean, you got like I've watched people stuck in there, you know, stuck in a rut trying to figure out what to do. Like these are grown, like grown young men, like, and they've said like, what am I supposed to do? Like, who, am, how am I supposed to rap? What niggas, want? like, I, I, am I supposed to rap like that or like that? When the truth of the matter is you just supposed to rap like you, right? right? But what they do, what the, what the industry has done is like, you know, there was a time when you could when you could be De La Soul, you could be Big Daddy Kane, you could be EPMD, you could be as as many groups as Slick Rick you could think of that sound nothing alike. You know, there was a lane for all of those things, and as time went by, at some point, all of those doors or all of those lanes got cut off, and they left one lane open. You know what I mean? And it was the lane where you do dumb shit. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And that's you know, put on a dress. Do some wild, do, you know what I'm saying? Do, do drugs, promote, promote. The drugs thing is another topic. Yeah, promote wastefulness. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm wasting money, wasting life, wasting time, wasting, you know, just just all of the uh, immaturities of, you know, the, the, the immaturities that we enjoy in this life. Promote yeah. that, period. You can get in that door. All the rest of those doors are shut, you know what I mean? But it's still people getting money and the, like I'm here to let you know, it's money to get in those other lanes. They just don't come with the massive fame. Mm -hmm. So people want the fame more than they want the money. You know what I mean? And it, it take a while before you get there. And I feel, and I honestly believe that's the reason why labels, like by the time I got in the game, it was already this, this understanding that you lucky if you get four albums. Most people get two right. or three, right? My Hip hop wasn't even that old. It was right. like 25 years old at that but point. But understand at that point, I had already seen LL put out four or five albums, and I was like, well, the special ones yeah. might, you understand what I'm saying? And I already believed I was one of the special ones, so that shit they was talking didn't deter me. But, you know, you see the shit, and it's like, the way I look at it now was like, they was that was the industry figuring out, you know, that was their way of pushing you out before you get smart. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm. when we're young, we all going to do dumb shit with this our goes, money. This goes into the age thing and why I feel like there's a whole, oh, you too old to make it. And I feel like the industry has created this thing where Absolutely. they prey on 20-year-olds who are coming out like, yeah, I want a chain. And Absolutely. I love a mansion. They're, they're not thinking of all this shit. So it's the perfect time to actually get somebody because emotionally, their emotional intelligence is on fucking. Absolutely. And let, and let me just say this for all of the people. It's crazy. We could be wrong. Right, we, we just could having be. the conversation, but this is but 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 we we might not be. You right. understand what I'm saying? Like, hey, you right? Know, you know what? Let me ask you something on this topic. Since we talking about this, you mentioned drugs, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's a perfect segue to this. Do you believe there are rappers, or there has been people in the game that have been cut a check from Big Pharma to mention certain shit in the records, like drop opiate references and shit like that, and actually get paid? by... Oh, like in their bars. Mm -hmm. Like a, like a commercial, almost mm -hmm. imagine it like an ad. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. 
But I hear think, rumors of shit like this. I just want to know. But thinking of it that way, in it this is. moment, it does not seem that far fetched to me. Like I watch content creators every day. Like like when the pandemic started, the pandemic, excuse me, right when that started, I was in the crib coming. I was I was coming up on wild new comedy to watch. Mm -hmm. Like wild new content creators and shit that I wasn't aware to before because I love comedy and shit. I used to be a grumpy nigga, so comedy is my favorite shit, right? So a lot of dudes from out here, like Big Jai, the you know, Big Jai and, and and Craig Smith and mm -hmm. and all and they network and I was I was seeing a lot of that stuff and all of that. Recently I got put on to this other dude. I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally showing these dudes love because I love what they do, right? Right, like independent artists. Right, it's like another that. dude from Chicago. His name is Corporate. He do like a bunch of skits or whatever. And you see in that, like you see them, in, like it's one thing to advertise and be like, yo, we selling these, you know what I'm saying? Like buy this, it's the best pillow, buy no jumper pillows. They're the best pillows in the blah, blah, blah. But it's another thing when you work it into your skit. You understand what that's, I'm saying? That's and, advanced. And I see it, and I see them do a lot of that. Right, so I'm sure they ain't just volunteer. No, they actually know. And and then at the end of the video, you see the you know the endorsement in print. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not far fetched at all for me right. to believe that you know the content creators of before. You know what I'm saying? Us, you know the rappers and shit, would be reached out to and being like, you know, promote this. I mean, they did fucking. Rappers got Hennessy deals and Timberland deals and all kind of Saint other Ides. all kind of other shit that like ain't this, no good for us. I feel like all those deals are the reason too. It's like the money because like if you think about it, the content is controlled. Mm -hmm. How is it not controlled? Let's look at it from an aspect of being controlled. Imagine a rapper like Kyrie. Imagine Kyrie if he was a rapper and mm -hmm. he wanted to put out an album, talk about all the shit that he believes. Mm -hmm. Would he be able to put that record out? Independently, yeah, not on a now. We talking about like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, like yeah. so. Like there is a thing where it's like there's a content thing, and that's how they want it to be because they know this sells, mm -hmm. and they know pumping guns to people sells and shooting shit and extendos in the fucking videos. This shit's more than it's ever been. It's oversaturated as fuck. It used to be a crazy thing, you know, when NWA mm -hmm. came out and when we when nah, but that's rap what, came but out. But I think it sells because they wanted to sell. I think you can make anything cool. <laughs> And, and, and you can like, make anything cool if you market it right. I mean, it's true. You if you, if they go make killing shit cool, and then when somebody actually dies, people realize, like, nah, this ain't cool. Mm -hmm. And we got to do something about it because we losing a lot of people. And you see it happening, then people be like, oh, why this shit happening? But maybe it's because, not all of it, but I feel like maybe we've normalized the culture mm -hmm. through that, through business people that have capitalized off it and made it a normalized thing in the culture, and everyone thinks that that's culture. Look, in the 80s and 90s, well, in the 80s when crack first came out, right? Hip hop was on crack ass. Shouts out to Ronald Reagan. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Word up. Hip hop was on their neck, like, like on, on crack, like, like nah. Right. Hip hop revolted against crack. It was songs, like originally there are songs old enough where people were bigging up crack. That song, uh, we gonna crack, crack it up, up. Crack, crack, crack it, it up, up. Yeah. Put, put it in the pot. All right, stop, all right, Wait, stop, yeah, stop, yeah, stop. Yeah, stop. Yeah, we can't sing yeah, no more yeah, of that, right? Yeah. What was that yeah. dude, Funk Master Wiz or something? Oh I don't know, yeah, I don't yeah, remember, yeah. right? But that yeah. was the thing, oh that song God. really happened. I didn't make it up, you, you know. I mean, we literally both simultaneously right. started. Yeah. Right. They're gonna meme that too, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, hip hop made a decision, it was like, uh-uh, get the fuck out of here with that. And hip hop attacked the crack epidemic. You understand? And it was not cool to do crack. But it's cool to do a lot of other shit, you know, because hip hop opiates are cool hip -hop though. endorsed it. They you love opiates what I'm now, right? You know, some people like to say that that ain't hip hop. I still, I feel like it's all hip hop. You know, it's different types of hip It's just a different floor right. in the building right. for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? But they endorsed that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and that's the shit that is, you know, the, the, the labels are endorsing. You know what I'm saying? So now it's fucking like it's mainstream. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you got people doing interviews on f big platforms with a red cup. Like we don't all know what's in. You understand what I'm saying? Or they, or they, or they will tell you. Nah, this is not a little bit of lean. You know what I'm saying? I like it's just it's there, there is no no negative response to it or and if right. the, the one that it is it ain't, cool it ain't cool enough yeah. or big enough yeah. you understand what i'm saying a lot a lot has changed and um it's also you know looking at cancel culture right 
Um, <laughs> Tiger, <laughs> Tiger put out a video, um, I Carumba, and he had like you know mariachi hats and all that and it uh, sombreros yeah. and wound up it wound up getting pulled down because a lot of people think found about, the defensive think about it what probably but, was in bad taste well, well, it was yeah, it was well, no, that's, check, that's different but I'm check sure. this out uh one of my favorite music videos of all time yeah, i was just gonna get ready cut to that right there I'm yeah like, the most innovative operation lockdown video was that 1996 yeah you and I'm like, the, what, what, what would cancel culture have done with that video okay so to, to create context for the people they're in you know head, completely headdresses. native native we look oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. all the way like I, the, the paint the feathers the garment <laughs> That's all of that hard, like the, yeah I <laughs> mean, amazing video and, there, and it was really you don't see videos like that right. being made anymore but do you feel like cancel culture would have a field day like I mean with they that probably now? would like and you know like because most of us weren't, like, it was just, it wasn't like, it was that deep for most of us. Not right. for rock and rock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Buckshot was always a little wizard. He might have knew, he might have been aware of the fact that all slaves didn't come from Africa. Some of us mm -hmm. were already here. Natives. Buck might have known that already, right? But I didn't. You understand? And, I'm, and, and Sean P. might not have, right? But- if I would have got attacked on that, I would I didn't have the information to back to to to, to yeah, defend that. Yeah, yeah. They would have canceled this. They they could have canceled the shit out of us if cancel culture was what it is now back then. You know what I mean? And a whole lot of other things people did in in music videos, you could not have got away with. For sure. Nah. Well, even just like the type of records, because what boot camp was doing was already going against the grain of the mainstream. I mean, uh, so with, with Black Moon, they dropped Enter the Stage. Mm -hmm. uh, Smith & West dropped The Shining. The Shining. Those, were those both on Nervous Records? Yeah. And then you guys were next. Mm -hmm. Held to Skeleton Not, but you guys weren't on Nervous, though. Mm -hmm. were you, was it, um, were you just under Duck Down, Duck Down right? Down priority. Yeah, and, well, and Duck Down was on priority. Right. But you guys had a lot of, even though Duck Down's officially um, an independent, mm -hmm. you guys were allowed to do pretty much what you wanted and it broke through on a mainstream level. We Y'all were to, played on major outlets. Yeah, we used to call ourselves understream or, okay. or, or main to ground. It's like halfway mainstream, halfway underground. I mean, and it's because we can't, it's, I think it has a lot to do with the era we came in. We came in at a, at a, at a, we, a lucky time in, mm. you know what I mean? When bars were still appreciated, you know what I mean? Uh, right. That's my favorite year in hip hop history is 96. 96 yeah, was an ill year, year for yeah, entertainment. Year Think about 96 for basketball. Everything. Think about the draft. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. 96 was a crazy. Right? Year. So like so yeah, that was that was I mean that was our thing like like I said when we came in it was like we we uh what was what was my point? I do that sometimes. As far as going understream. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Like you had a lot of dope groups were blowing were, pun like mop you know, mop yeah but you were in the golden golden it was there. yeah it was it was like a gold rush yep you know what I'm saying? Was right. Up right so it's like it. like the the record labels was like what like we, they all wanted a piece of it like you know def jam was already existing loud acquired wu-tang you know what i mean like i remember boot camp like duck Dow having met having meetings with with uh with Steve Rifkin. With Steve Rifkin, you know what I mean? Talking about taking Duck Down over there, just, you know, it didn't For, Forgive out. my ignorance if I don't really understand this part. Like, what did you ever shine light on what, like, how your shit played out with Duck Down? Like, or, or like, how that... Um, yeah. Have but, you ever, like, broke that down? Because I never really heard, like, how that situation ended up. Which, as far as, like, my separation from Duck yeah. Down? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I've, I've spoken about it, but I don't mind talking about it. It's not, you know, it's not talked about it. That's not a big story, you know, it didn't go viral or nothing like that. It was just, it was a situation when, um, actually on the song, Rockness AP, mm -hmm. off of my, the title song off of my, my last album, I talked about it, where it's like, Duck Down and Priority split up. As they was, as they were splitting, as they were going through their divorce, Duck Down reached out to Priority, it's like, listen, there's no need for us to make the guys wait while we doing what we doing. Like, sitting their releases now. And what year was this? This was in probably 98, 99, okay. right? 99, because Magnum Force came out in 98. It was like, um, you know, some of the guys want to do solo albums, they don't, we don't need to hold them up. And Priority sent everybody's release except mine. Great. And Drew High called me and told me this, and I was like, 
what that mean? And he was like, he don't know. And I was like, so for the first time I got on a plane by myself, you know, travel without the squad, I came out here and I went up there and I went and seen him. And this is, I mean, this is, it's a few stories within the story, but I'll streamline this one. It was like, felt like Brian Turner was hiding from me. I'm going around the office. Nobody knew where he was. It's like, they swore I was about to do some ice cube shit. I was going to say, is this some ice cube right. shit? I was literally about to say right. that. But then I found, I, I located like, like, but I knew that staff, like, you know, I located one of the people that I was really, really cool with. Mm -hmm. I was like, where's Brian? <laughs> and she took me straight to him, right? Like five minutes later, I was in front of Brian. And what he was saying to me was like, I'm not saying you can't leave. I was just trying to buy myself some time. I wanted, I wanted to crack at it. Because he wanted to blow right. you up as a solo right. artist. So, you know, we had that conversation and I'm like, all right, no doubt, I leave. I called Drew High. Bitch ass nigga talking about he trying to sign me and blah 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 and, and Drew is because you know for, to me it was like you know loyalty is a, is a big deal for me and for me it was us against them if we right. leaving what is these niggas talking about you know yeah. what I'm saying but Drew was like that's not the worst I, you know he was basically he was like take it he was like listen the game is changing it's like deals is not deals are not falling off trees right now it's scary out there it's like you know the system over there you're in that system they love you over there you got love for them it might be an easy transition mm -hmm. and i'm looking at it like i can keep the boot camp flag going in this you know in this time period well, it makes sense right because like like when smith and, like like you mentioned smith and wesson and, and, and black moon their first albums came out on, on nervous on nervous right they was beefing with them by the time Helter Skelter and OGC came along. So when we got, so they wasn't, they refused to ever record again for Nervous. And to Helter Skelter and OGC, we had to hold the flag. You know what I'm saying? So so you guys weren't recording at uh, D and D then. Now huh? we were recording okay. at D and D, but it was like, but you no know, D and D was just the studio. That right. wasn't a label. They didn't have nothing to do. You no, know, they didn't have anything to do with each other. So it was I like, thought they were heavily affiliated with Nervous at the time. Nah, not okay. only because they did a lot of work there, but okay. not like okay not tied to each other. You know, I probably just thought that because the D and D all stars mm -hmm. join and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. 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 But it, but that's what it was. And it was like, all right, we uh we gotta, you know, now I'm in that I'm in position to fly the flag. You know what I'm saying? To hold the fort down. So, you know what, considering all of these things, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? And I did it. But um, you know, that album never came out. Like they the album was originally supposed to be called Planet Rock. We had all of these ideas to get The Rock from wrestling on it, uh, Chris Rock, my boy Vin Rock from Naughty by Nature. This is <laughs> he was gonna Planet Rock the shit out this shit, right? And you know, like they 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 priority they was Beats with it. by Pete Rock. Yeah, Let's yeah, go. yeah, all of that shit, right? <laughs> like at least one from right, them, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like that was the plan. And you know, I got to you know I got to work making the you know the skeleton of the album, doing all of the. You know, and I did all of that shit. All right, now I need these things. And we. this is when we started encountering problems because it was like nothing. I'm like, what, do you not like the album? What, what, uh, tell me something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not. And nothing happened, so we, 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 we stalled, and eventually I wanted to be out, and they let me out. I'm like, I right, bet, right? So when I left, um there was another deal almost waiting for me. Like I went out there to, to I came out here to to finalize all of that and I ran into DJ Lethal. I met him on a, on a whim. Okay. You know what I mean? Like uh, I was trying to get some weed, speaking of which, um, my man, <laughs> my man. Um, what you got? What, what, what rock smoking? <laughs> I, I, I think I just, I might have still have a little bit of Pineapple Express. There's other oh, shit I got. Still on that. Uh -huh. I, listen, hey, you, I, I come out here. I come out here and I go. I, I go in the spots. I go. What you got? Give me some of this for this, and they give me, and, and and I'm going. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not a bougie smoker. I'm a, with the original. I'm, I'm a smoker, smoker, <laughs> right? But um, what was I saying? Damn, 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 damn. Uh, Joints over blunts. Uh, I put a little Fanto in here because let's go, man. See, this is what I told you only last time. You gotta be a real one to blend this it, shit, right? Man. It would be there looking at me funny when I start blending. <laughs> that's my very shit Brooklyn, though. Listen, it's very. You just Brooklyn. gotta blend. I need that kick. Like, yeah, he, you know, it would have been like Fanto. Joints. It would have been Fanto exclusively, but sometimes the Fanto is so man. the shit don't want to stick. You can't seal it up and all of that. It'd be just it'd be shitty sometimes. So you you use this to to as a band aid, well, let's, let's see. and then 
Let's see what you And then after that, I just started right, using right. less. Once I realized that I was actually addicted to tobacco leaf, I started, I'm like, oh, shit. So I started using less of mm -hmm. the Fonto, but I need that taste in there. Like, I, I just, it's that um, kick. You need yeah. that. So you had the situation with DJ Lethal then? Oh, right. right. Yeah. And, and yeah, and that happened. And what a lot of people don't know is like, there, was, there exists on files somewhere a Heads Ain't Ready Part 3. Wow. Yes. For, with the whole boot camp. Click. Yes, yes. With the great eight plus, the representatives. Wow. Uh, I believe I got Doc Holiday on there. So like the extended boot camp yeah, click, not yeah. just the core members. Because that's the type of shit I was on. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, just making it right. Like, like, like I'm carrying the flag. I'm gonna make it bigger. You understand what I'm saying? I like, like that, man. let everybody, let everybody shine. Cause I could do what I want. I don't gotta ask Ruck about none of this shit. I ain't gotta clean it. Let's go. And that was my plan. But when I signed there. Was around the same time when Eminem declared war on Limp Biscuit, and oh. I don't know for a fact whether these two things coincided, but I know Interscope dropped DJ DJ Lethal's label. I mean, it would make sense. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not blaming Eminem. I can't say definitively. Eminem is a—he's he, just a, he got a power. battle rap monster, man. He, he got he, power. He, he disses people here. <laughs> shit happens over there, man. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was you crazy. feel like that's what? <laughs> that's crazy. It was no, because look, man, like I promise you. What if it was just timing, like coincidence? I mean, it could have been. I, that's that's why I'm careful not <laughs> to say nothing. Like like ah. I know what I know and what, and I'm very clear on what I just believe or what. No, I know the difference between what I know and what is I don't. Is battle know. rap threatening to like in, to the industry like that? Like when when rappers start get the battling and all that, does that become like really like sh stressful for the executives? What you mean like what? Oh, I don't know. Because like people, they have they the, like they're invested in the artist, then they see another artist come out and demolish their whole entire product. Like yeah, how they supposed to feel about I don't that? Know I've that, always like that about never it. happened to us, so I don't know, right? Like <laughs> I never been in that you know in that type of situation. I mean, like. We was in a situation where we were, we were in a situation where we dissed the rapper. You understand what I'm saying? And, but it, you know, we don't know how the labels and shit. I mean, uh, niggas is gonna feel the way niggas is gonna feel. There's probably gonna be some issues behind those situations. Most right. of the, a lot of times there are, but I don't know about because because labels is so you know labels is putting out insurance policies on the rappers nowadays. Like it's like Crazy. they don't. Like they might be like, all right, fuck it. This is more press for us. Like they, I don't, I don't know the level of they sinister. Well, since since you brought it up, um, and, and if you don't want to get too deep into it, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember back in the day, because you know I'm a I'm a diehard fan, mm -hmm. and like you know, and I I used to, I used to be like, damn, like I wish I was, like. My grandfather's from Brooklyn. I, I low-key wish I was from Brooklyn, yeah. too, being from L.A. and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember when there was friction between y'all and Biggie yeah. and the whole ba Bad Boy mm -hmm. thing and the OGC video, yeah, you yeah. know, they straight up dissed Biggie. There mm -hmm. was, like, a, a fake Biggie in the video. Mm -hmm. They were clowning and yeah. all that. Like, what what's, like, the... Can you talk about that at all and how that played out? I can talk about it, but every time I talk about this shit, me and my boy Strain wanted to have an argument. Instead, I cannot answer this question right by him for for, what, for whatever. But the truth of the matter is, yes, that happened. You know what I mean? It was it was over a song, you know where. Oh, the you could be as good as the best right. of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So. You know, uh, what, over the beat. No, no, the lyric, and and you know, in hindsight, it's twenty twenty because we we all feel. I know all the boot camp members. We feel a little bit of stupid about this because it's not like it wasn't our line to begin with. We stole it from a reggae record. You understand what I'm saying? We ain't jacket, but we you know we. But in our defense, hip hop is hip hop, and there are some unwritten. If 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 I'm a producer and you're a producer, right? We make beats, and I caught a sample from the Isley Brothers that nobody caught except you, and you hear it, are you not going to tell me, oh, shit, I caught I, that? I already flipped that. Before. I already flipped that. Yo, yeah. I just I just caught that part, blah, blah, blah. I've seen it happen a thousand times, right? So with that, you know, because that's just hip-hop courtesy. And we, you were already cool. I know a lot of uh, right, right. A, a lot of boot camps from bed style. I don't know. If no, all not you, a lot. Only but, one of us. Uh, Only one uh, of us. It's like the rest tech of, or steel, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tech. The rest tech, of us yeah. are from Brownsville, Okay, yeah. right? But I done seen that happen a million times with producers. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I, could, yeah, I, I caught that. I chopped the other part. <laughs> And then right. they do they look as rappers we do the same thing. Yeah. Like if you got a punchline, a fucking uh 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 I don't know, a James Bond punchline that sounds similar. Look, I did a song on Rockness AP and Inspector Deck is on the song, right? I said one of my punchlines, 
something something about an official and the whistle was something like that. He was like, yo, immediately he told me I got a line like that. I said it like this, blah, blah, blah. So you, so don't nobody accuse the other person of biting. It's right. common, common hip hop courtesy. So by not doing it, you know, we didn't get that or whatever. So we felt like, you know, it was it was the bullshit. So yeah. So we, you y'all had it on a record first and then him on the and then Biggie on the the Get Money remix, right, I believe. Right. He had the hook. You could be as good as the best right. of them. And then y'all somebody in the camp felt some type of way about it. Mm -hmm. Um who was it? Buck who who I'm who I'm assuming that? it was Strang. Excuse me. I mean, yeah. it was OGC. Yeah, it was OGC. I mean, somebody in OGC. So Strang or Louisville or Top Dog. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, because because I always like, I wondered if it was that or if it was just on some Brooklyn street shit. You nah, know what I mean? Wasn't. Like, it then, was that. It was silly, but it got out of hand. And um, and yeah, that was the thing. Like, and the the like there were multiple there were multiple incidents. People don't know about all of the incidents. There yeah, was I was a, about to say, did it spill into some? Yeah, there some? was there was an incident. No, it spit like yeah, there was an incident. Right. Anything we can talk about? Huh? <laughs> Anything we can talk about? <laughs> like, I mean, listen, it's a statue of limitations. No, listen, listen, this listen. No, look, twenty-five look years ago, it's like Strang got jumped. You understand what I'm saying? And that shit was, you know, it. it we kind of never really got over that. Right. To this day, because that shit didn't play out the way normal shit, the way shit's supposed to play out with homies. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So it's still, it's still a little bit of uneasiness about that on that topic to this day in boot camp. Right. You understand what I'm saying? But, um, like there was another event. There was an event at the tunnel. Mm -hmm. they, used to, they used to have this, 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 this event called Hot Night Backstage. Hot 97 used to throw the event at the tunnel. And we had a run in with them there. You know what I'm saying? And I was there for that. With so the I bad could, boy camp. So I can speak about it. It was, the, yeah, like with the junior mafia and blah, 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 and that shit. And it was a situation where um, we were all, boot camp, <laughs> were already banned from Hot 97. It was like, Fire. like we was dead. We wasn't, <laughs> we wasn't even supposed to be in there, right? You understand what I'm saying? But, you know, we had, you know, some people actually liked us or whatever. Drew Howe was, was able to uh, pull a, call a couple of favors and we had a couple of, uh, you know what I mean? A couple of, uh, a few of us in there. It was six of us. It was right. Smith and Wesson, me, Ruck was barred. He couldn't go. They right? wasn't fucking with Sean. They was, was not fucking with Sean P, right? Um, Buckshot and Buck's brother. And we was in there. And we had a run-in with, with, with the Junior Mafia. It didn't get violent. You understand what I'm saying? It was a bunch of, you know, it was a bunch of words, a bunch of posturing and all of that. Like, it could have went, and, and they had numbers. We would have probably lost that night, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, but... um. Security, you know, intervened. They seen the scene building and all of that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that happened. And and even even that night, I hate I hated the way that night turned. I was like, what the? F you know what I'm saying? It, it it was weird, right? So then it then it event. The next incident that happened was 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 what happened to Strang. And somebody, you know, what I mean, alerted Junior Mafia niggas to the fact that boot camp was in D and D studio at. A certain time and niggas ran and I was in the studio that night, but I left. We used to have this thing called pulling the ruck. It was <laughs> it was basically the it was basically the Irish goodbye. Ruck you was just dip. Yeah, just ruck was just ruck made it. He made that shit famous. We didn't even know it was a, such a thing. We so we called it pulling the ruck. I like it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's and, annoying to have to say goodbye. To right. It's like yeah. yeah years I'm later. Gone. Years later, he was like, I did that because you know you niggas would be if I'm if I'm leaving, you are gonna be like, nah. You either try to get me to stay or feel like y'all gotta leave too. Yeah. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna do y'all all the favor and myself, and I'm just get the fuck out of here. So. We just started calling it pulling the ruck, and eventually we all started doing it. Niggas like, yo, where you was at, rock? And I pulled the ruck, and you just and niggas just got it right. I pulled the ruck that night. I was on the phone in the studio uh, with a chick. Salute to her, my homegirl, because you know we used to date back then, and she put together the right combination of words, and I was out. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? I left, and, but if if I would have if I would have stayed, the, I'm almost sure the outcome would have been worse. Yeah, you understand what I'm right. saying? So, and it was, and the outcome wasn't good. And they caught him slipping outside the studio. No, or? in the studio. In the studio. Okay. In the studio, like, like, in the studio, and where you got to get buzzed in and all of that shit. Yeah, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? So it was like, so it's like somebody let them niggas in, and this, that, and the third. And yeah. So it was. So that's why I don't like talking about it. You understandable. Understand understandable. And, and 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 yeah, but that is what it is. And it's crazy because there is a recent podcast where, uh, you know, with 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 the. Uh, 
Coco Bees with Smith and Wes over there. Yeah. And they, you know, people were getting a little incensed about it, and people were saying on the Math Hoffa podcast. Right. So that's, and, salute to Math. Right. My boy. And and they was talking about <laughs> <laughs> shout some math. You feel me? Nah, yeah. Shout, shout math. some yeah, math. Yeah. 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 They, yeah, they yeah. was. They, they was. Um, I forget uh, these things. I'm like. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, man. Me and Math were Sean uh, yeah, Price's what, what, favorite battlers too. Yeah, RFC, yeah, no, man. You know, oh, we were his favorite and, and, battlers. And, and and no, Math was always my favorite battler. Right. From Jump, right? Because he kind of brought me into it by like his his battle went viral and I started watching. Him versus Iron. That was an amazing battle. That was a, that was. Yeah. Amazing. Which battle but you? I'm talking about the Dose battle. Oh yeah, right. shit! It went viral because I mean, yeah, well, everybody saw that. On yeah. It you know and 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 I wasn't impressed. Because math didn't even really get the rap in that battle. And let's be real, those did have an amazing bar in there. The click, clack, blow, turn your dome to a stadium. It was okay. Chrome to your cranium, dome to a stadium. It was okay. That's Yo, hard. You got, bro. Hey, it was bro, okay. I love how Brooklyn sticks together. No, That's it's hard. not that. You can't fuck with Brooklyn. Like it's not that. that. Like, Let they, me tell you something. Really like, as a I rapper, wish LA was like this. As a rapper, <laughs> shit, Brooklyn niggas, we wish y'all. We listen. What? We feel people like people in LA don't fuck with each other. But, but, Brooklyn, at if you all. from but Brooklyn, when we and you see it, you like fuck that. Nah, Brooklyn. but when we see it, like New York as a whole, we okay, yeah, that's we different. feel like everybody got better unity than we do. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Because New York is like a really well, you can't even consider it like compare it to just LA. There's so many boroughs that are so I, different I, from each other. I definitely, but the boroughs stick together. New, New York, uh, Brooklyn, yeah. New York is literally like I think the fourth or fifth biggest city in America. Just Brooklyn, right? Not so. The Brooklyn's it's, its own. It's, 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 it's a planet. <laughs> yeah. But, but now nah, what I was about to now nah, with the dome to the state. This is what I think. Like. One time. Chrome to a crazy like, like, for back then it was the, the delivery, was the cadence of it for back then. No, the then delivery was, was really dope. No, crazy. it was a good bar. The delivery was dope, but it's just like what as a rapper, you hear so much crazier shit. You know what I'm saying? Like a nigga, like like somebody a, a quote to me like one time somebody said to me he was like he quoted a Nas bar. It was like when I was 12, I went to hell for snuff and Jesus. Jesus. And niggas love that. I feel like, but rappers. Feel like that was dope, but it wasn't the illest shit we heard. Nas has said way illest shit than that. For right. sure. You understand That's what I'm saying? And probably even on that verse. You, you understand did. what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Like, but you know, to, to people who don't do this, you don't build bars for a living or a hobby, you know, certain things are like Jesus is a figure we all know and have heard of, right? So when you say that line, it strikes a chord with people, but it's a very easy line to come up with. You understand? Right. Diz has said Diz has said some shit that to me, if if some shit like it's a skill to say some some things that you're gonna catch right away. But to go over your head bars where I know you're gonna catch it later. That's a skill too. I think For I show. said a bar like that in the battle. For sure, too. but and, and, yeah. and the thing in is, that, in that battle, I'm sure you did. You do all I the had time. The, I think I had the disasters evil, like attaching a Catholic cathedral to the back of a preschool. <laughs> Come on, yeah, Come like, on. like, and 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 think of what he, and think about what was. I'm the done. best rapper on earth, just by the way. Not better than me, but I'll take that, right? <laughs> nah, I love look, it. I love it. No, man, you got the battle rap. Nah, but what is thing. dope though is like what he said there. Just how many syllables he made rhyme, and how many times he did that. You know, when I was twelve, when I was twelve, I went to hell for snuff and Jesus. Twelve in hell, rhyme and Jesus. That that it's rhyme like with a, the ball like before that. It's like a nursery that. rhyme, though. right? It's not. not that. Also, keeping in mind that was 1992, and he which was a kid crazy too. Crazy for that time. Yeah, he was a and kid he was too. Like 17. <laughs> but what? A, but but I still believe that he had better bars on that. No, on that and, verse. And, and I don't disagree. You know and, and even maths, the only thing you squeeze is your feet and your little brother's shoes. Yeah, I thought yeah, that yeah. line was actually funny. Was, nah, was, was hard. That was a good <laughs> line. Was hard. Right. That was a good line. But the whole reason I brought I can say positive things. The whole reason I that's very big of you. That was that was a good line. The whole reason I brought that up. Is because I feel like everyone on that podcast missed something really key. They're like, they're tripping on Smith and Wesson for riding with Pac and mm -hmm. fucking with Pac. But like, do y'all not remember that BCC had beef with Biggie? Yeah, but the truth. And like, but the truth that's about like a that huge thing to not mention. Yeah, but the truth about the matter is, it wasn't all of them. They wasn't tripping on them about that. It was just bigger. Right. Bigger just said, salute to Bigger. I, I, it's important for me to say I fuck with Bigger. That's my boy, right? But Bigger said, he was like, it was him that said, we thought, you, people in New York thought y'all was traitors and all of that. And, you know, when you young, you feel like your circle is the world. You know, if it's if it's prevalent right. in your hood, you it might feel like it's prevalent everywhere. Yeah, that's your world when you... Right. Yeah. I promise you, I 
never heard that. I, I, I'm surprised to hear that as well. I never heard that. And I've always been the closest thing to Smith & Wesson since the day they came in the game. You understand? With their first single on the B side, I'm the I'm talking all, I did the whole intro. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Like, I've always been standing right next to them. I never heard that. Ever. You know what I mean? So when, when Bigger first said that, Tech was just like, he was like, man, fuck out of here. And, it, and, and he ignored it. He kept making whatever point he was making. It was when Bigger was speaking about the Pac said, talking about killing New York babies. And niggas like, he never said that. I didn't hear that. What I assume he was talking about was when Pac said, my fofo make sure all y'all kids don't grow. Come Cause, on. Cause, no, because I did hear Come that. Come on, killing New York look, babies. Look, I heard the line get, I heard that get mentioned briefly in, the, in their argument, a debate. Right, but it never came back up. It was still like, what are you talking about? I never heard him say, not in those words that Bigger was using, but I assume that those was the word. He and was talking about a specific person. He was talking about a specific person or persons. Right. You know, anybody who want to be a part of Bad Boy, you know, if you want, if you want as a label, as, as a staff. Or a motherfucking crew. Right. If you, and if you want to be down with them, fuck you too. He was being be very specific, though. And then my Don Chino caught a straight shot. Right, 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 right. But he wasn't saying, if you from New York, fuck you, no. your kids, and all of that. And, Fox from New York. Right. And that was the thing. That was what Smith & Wesson could not get behind. Right. So even when Steele got up and, and, and mediated, gave him a hug and all of that, Bigger said, you know, you know, it's yes, it is all love. And he, you know, it was all it was a it was a beautiful moment for a second, but Bigger felt he 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 wanted to still drive his point home. Yeah. He's like, yo, it's all love, but you know it's true. He he said that and, and still is like, nah, I can't co-sign that. And Tech was like, nah. You know, and I I didn't see the exact moment when Tech snapped, but I know from the time Steel stood up to talk to Bigger, Tech stood up. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Because like on, on some, we don't know where this is going, but I know where I'm going if it go where I don't like it to go, type of vibe, right? Just just protecting his brother. You understand what I'm saying? It's only right, whatever. But but yeah, like it wasn't no malice. It was just bigger saying what he said from his world. And I said this, and I'm and, and I'm gonna keep saying this until people get it. Being a rapper is one of the strangest professions you can have. In the fact of in this fact. A person could walk up on you that doesn't rap. They don't want to be a rapper. They don't want to be a manager of rappers. They don't want to own a record label where they fucking, with, with, you know, and sign rappers. They don't want nothing to do with the business. Right. They can walk up on me or Diz and tell us how to do our job. Right. <laughs> They will do that. Nah, you got your sh this. Your shit might be a little too bit too this. You got to do it this way, Rock. You got to dumb it down. You got to you got to do a song. Come up with a dance. Nah, them beats you on. Now you got. It happens. They will do that. You don't even do that to the McDonald's worker unless he making your burger. It's crazy because it'd be the fans too. It's like you looking at it. It's, That's like, what it's like it's the same the shit as the sports. It's like they be on the court and like when when somebody misses a fucking armchair you know, quarterbacks. It's but, like um, yeah, like but so like, but but, you, you, but all right, but, the field, but do these but but when they when you know when you on the when you in the arena when you at a game or whatever you know cheering and booing is part of that hustle. It's part of the game, right? You are gonna talk trash to the to you understand what I'm saying? Was, yeah, I'm, I'm but not, you ain't gonna run. Up, you're not supposed to run up to a, a rapper and you not right. You're not gonna go because when because when we on stage rapping, right? It ain't nobody telling us how to rap. Then no, they run up on us in. McDonald's mm -hmm. in the fucking gas station or at, at at the baby shower your sister having and all of that and and they will literally tell you how you supposed to do your shit. You need to do some shit to come out with a dance or blah 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 or you know what I'm saying? You need to highlight them Griselda niggas. They popping them that, that's and in that same vein, right? They will tell you things about things that happened in the era that they weren't there for because oh that's the crazy they heard it you know yeah. certain you know they know somebody who they, they know somebody who might have been there or the shit went you know it, it was newsworthy you know everybody think they know what happened when with with the nipsey shit or the troy ave shit or the yeah. two you know it's millions of theories out there and you may think you have this whole shit figured out until you talk to somebody who was there and they tell you how stupid you sound and that's why it's good that uh, you feel me. Tech was there 
to clear that up. Right. And, um, that's why I wanted to hear your opinion on right. that. Now, we have a limited amount of time, but there's some very important things I want to touch on. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, you got the you got the polo bag, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. I specifically had to put on some low. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I didn't rack it. <laughs> I purchased this, but I had to put on the low mm -hmm. in honor of y'all. You feel well, me? Well, I mean, you, listen, here's the thing. It's a, it's a misconception going on right Decepticons like polo. Okay, so no, right. We so, like polo. So no, th that's what I wanted to talk about. Right. All right. You're a part of, let's just say, an organization mm -hmm. called the Decepticons. Mm -hmm. A defunct organization. A defunct organization. Called, called right? the Decepticons. All right. An inactive uh, organization. Allegedly. <laughs> oh allegedly. My God. Now there's um, for those that don't know, what's the what was the because right now. New York's having a big renaissance with drill music mm -hmm. and the gang life of New York is going mm -hmm. really, really crazy. Um, what's the difference between gangs of New York in your era in the 80s and 90s with the decepts, the low lifes and all that compared to what's going on with this new era of New, of new York I mean, gangsterism? I don't know if I can give it an, an educated enough guess because I don't really understand some of the shit that's going on now. Like it's to a different, you know, it's to a different level, and I'm not in it. To, I mean, to, there wasn't a bunch of Bloods and Crips when you. No, you know definitely what I'm wasn't like, no Bloods and Crips. I think it that's was, the main main difference that it was more thugs and they had their own like kind of thing, and then now it's more West influenced. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's like like not just West, but just influenced no, by the like, rest listen, of the country. No, like listen, the Crips and the Bloods made. Well, up. you also got GDs, you got Midwest right, games. Yeah, so but, I'm saying but, the rest of the country. Too. Nah, but the Crips and the Bloods made the biggest impact on New York gang right. culture. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's not you know nowadays it's changing, it's evolving into other things like you know they got some gangs that they like some of these gangs are com comprised of crips and blood hybrid gangs you understand yeah. what i'm saying yeah. and this it, it's it's more about your area where you from or not even about your area just who just your affiliations just who you really rock with you know what i mean and it's it's crazy but you know other than that i would say that you know like they don't care no more. Like you understand, as far as y'all were like, way more down to fight. I feel like is that safe to say? I mean, yeah, y'all were fight. But these yeah. dudes are quick to go to the guns. Yeah, they're pulling I mean, out. That's anywhere. But y'all yeah, were down yeah, to fucking yeah, that's, squat. I mean, but I think that was like, wasn't it like that out here was, too? It though, was anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Not really though. Like I mean, at some point y'all like extent, to fight too. Yeah, to an extent, but. Right. There are still fools getting chipped out here a lot on, on some I think it just used shit, to be but. more like hustling groups, you know, groups of the people that used to just get money together mm -hmm. and they were like cliques and it turned more into like bandanas and gangs now. Like, I feel and that's like, the shit that he doesn't see right. that he didn't used to see back then. Is it was more of like a New Yorker thing and they had their identity with that. Right. And now it's just. Well, a lot of people don't know that there was gangs. They don't know about the nah, it was obviously, shit, but right? I'm I'm just saying, like you know, as a whole, now what it looks like, it just looks like the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, out in New York, like, like the gangs out there started just like any other gang start. Basically, like somebody get fucked with, they band together. You know what I'm saying? To protect themselves, and then they get out of hand. You know what I'm saying? And the Decepticons weren't no different. You know what I mean? Like, it was started by some of the smartest kids in the city. They went to the, the fucking, you know, the specialized high schools and all of that. And, you know, those kids get fucked with. And then all of this shit happened. You know what I'm saying? But, like, the big one, I feel like one of the biggest differences about gangs today and gangs back then, or just street violence in general, is the level the the, the innocent the innocent bystanders, mm. the level of innocent yeah. bystanders like you know, people if somebody got hurt it was usually back then they was probably into some shit like if you got shot or you fuck you know what I'm saying you you ended up in some thug shit, oh, no nah, that's not true because you have the victims but what I'm saying like the victims are the victims but it's a lot of a lot of strays like little kids and old ladies saying, yeah. and all of that shit you know what i'm saying happening and yeah that i don't i didn't see as much of that when i was out thugging you know what i mean like that was something rare um i think we'd be remiss to if we're going to sit down with the rock nest monster to not talk about your um you know gone but not forgotten partner in rhyme mm -hmm. you feel me mm -hmm. the late great Sean Price yeah. and um Sean lives on. And you know, I, for there's a lot of kids watching this or younger audience that no jumper has that might not be aware of 
just how important Sean P was and like, you know, from the beginning, what an amazing lyricist he was, mm -hmm. what an amazing dude he was. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a joint with him from back in the day, I'm mm -hmm. happy to say. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, y'all got a record together. Yeah, and, and him, um, was it called? What was that record? No Respect. No respect. And, um, and the fact that after, you know, even there was a whole new boot camp renaissance that came, mm -hmm. I want to say around 2003, 2004, mm -hmm. when, when with him, he, with, him, with yeah. Monkey Bars and mm -hmm. all those records yeah. and all his, you know, Jesus Price superstar mm -hmm. mixtapes and all that. And, um, and then, um, you know, when he was at his peak and everything's going crazy, y'all coming together, making more records, he had an untimely mm -hmm. passing. How did that affect you? Shit, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Literally. I can't think of nothing worse. I'd have been locked up. I'd have been shot. My whole hand caught on fire before. Like, I've been stabbed in my chest by my brother. Like, mm. my mother's other son. The man who was put on this earth to protect me. You understand? Oof. None of that hurt worse than losing my nigga P. None of it. I do all of that shit two times in a row over. You know what I mean? Like, real talk. Yeah. It's something that you never get over. And because of who he is and who I am, on a day when you feel like not dealing with that, you better stay in the house. You better not go online because the fans won't let you not deal with it. Mm. They're going to see you. You're a constant reminder of him. And if they see you, if they don't know what to say to you, you know, sometimes people just want, they, people be talking just because they got lips. Right. They don't really have nothing to say to you. They're going to talk about him because they know that, that they know that about my life. They're going to be, you're rest in peace to pee. You know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas, niggas got me through. I didn't feel like thinking about that today. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, when I turn my lights on, I mean, the ones in my brain, I know that I have to deal with that shit. As long as I'm about to be in, uh, involve myself with Man. other people, that's about to be a part of my reality. That's you know what I mean? That's real shit right there. And that's what, I got a song called The Fraternity. It was supposed to be on Rockness AP. But this song, I spoke directly to people like Bun B, like Eminem, like uh, KRS-One. Dudes who went through the, the fraternity is the, the thing that we all have in common. A loss. We all, a loss of a famous partner. Right. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that the world is going to attach you to forever. You know what I'm saying? You might you're not gonna be able to shake that. That that's that's the the deepest part about what you're saying that's like affecting me the most is that like your relationship with him when you have somebody that you're so integrated and mm -hmm. ingrained with like that, it's a different type of pain that most people could compartmentalize because they lose somebody close to them, but they're not enveloped in their life mm -hmm. like that. So they could compartmentalize mm -hmm. that. But for you, you cannot escape it. You will be reminded of it all the time. Every time I walk inside that's, a club, that's every time I do a yeah. show, every time, you know what I'm saying? Like all of that shit remind that's, me of him. Oh, I'll go to sleep. I'll wake up. It'll be 317. That's his birthday. Wow. Shit, like it's all, it's all, it's always this. It's, just, it's a hole you never get. You just learn to live through. You know what I mean? Do you feel like, um, how do you how do you deal with that? You, like literally, just if you're having a rough day, you're just gonna not go outside. Type yeah, shit. I'm probably not talk to nobody that day. I'm gonna just stay in my room, smoke weed, watch TV. You know what I mean, shit like that. Um, and that's gotten harder to do because like because I have a daughter. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So if and she's eight, like she was a year and change when when he passed. You know so. Back then, I could sit her down and she'd be there. You know what I'm saying? She ain't, you know, but now she active and smart and all this shit. She see me like, her emotional intelligence is on a thousand. Mm. Like, wow. she sees me, I can fool her mother for hours to thinking I'm cool. Ain't nothing bothering me. Not her. She sees through she it. She sees it. And me, like, she could look at me for one second. If I don't get it, if I, if I, if she catch me before I fix my face, she's not letting it go. <laughs> she's not letting it go, and she's on me. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, shouts to you, the the whole boot camp and everybody, and Bernadette, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for, for how amazingly y'all are keeping the mm -hmm. memory alive. But I think, in my opinion, one of the greatest tributes is the fact that I'm pretty sure he would want you to keep on pushing and doing your shit. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing. And you yeah. recently just right. put out yeah. a fire-ass record. I would have to fight P. 
if you if you if, if you I wanted to stop rap. rap. That's if what I I'm saying. Rapping. So in the afterlife, I would have to, I would I would be in this nigga dreams doing 52 hand blocks and my dreams with this nigga because <laughs> it's going down. Let's go. You know what I mean? And, and it's 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 incredible that I, I love the new project, you mm -hmm. know. So you have is did Ron Browse, Ron Browse yeah. produce the entire yes. thing? Yes, he now, did. Now, now, okay. A this lot. is the album cover, y'all. Shit's album cover. fire. fire. Really yeah. dope record. And it's real, it's got an updated bounce with the mm -hmm. drums and shit, but mm -hmm. it's real grimy. You know what I wanted to do? You know what that, I'm glad you brought this up earlier. That is my understream album. They're exact, and it's got like, that bounce yeah, to it. Yeah, because people, people have placed us in the underground. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of my niggas have accepted that. I never did. So this is what Priority should have dropped in 99, basically. Right, right. Okay. Ooh, right. And, and, and here's the thing. What's dope about Ron Browse, people know, a lot of people know him from like Pop Champagne, mm -hmm. right. these big pop records. They forget this is a dude that produced Ebonics. Ether. 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 You feel me? He produced Ether, Big L. No, no, ain't nobody he, forgot about Ether. He produced but I'm I saying, Whoop Your Head, boy. Yep. Yeah. You know yeah. I will. What? I, I challenge anybody watch. I dare anybody watching this interview to go Google Ron Browser's catalog. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. I dare you. Ludacris. All, so. How did y'all come together, though? That guy. Okay. My brother, the last American B-boy. Okay. Neffy Neff. Um, I told him to change his name to Neffy Neff because people be fucking up his name all the time and calling him the last American Boy Scout and shit. And, uh. and, that's, and that's the homie Rampage and all that. But he don't want to listen to me. But he's a genius, right? I'm sitting. This is my friend. And he... One day, and it was crazy, it was right after my, my daughter and her mom moved to Arizona. I was all distraught and shit. I, I, I moved them out there, stayed for the month, and then came back to New York, and I was fucked up. Because I felt like I failed. Like I couldn't make what was supposed to work in New York work, right? It's expensive. It's fucked up, right? In, 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 in the heart and head. And my man says to me one day, what you think about doing an album with Ron Browns, a whole album? And the only thing I thought was like, I can do that? Because you know, not everybody is willing to do that. You no, know, do a whole, hmm, does he want to work with me? You know what I'm saying? Because the answer is hell yes, if I, you know what I'm saying? So he spoke to him and, and we started. from that. This album would have been out in like 2019, but, or no, not, in, in 2020 it would have been out. Right. But we all know what happened in 2020. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But it's something. Before we go, I want to talk to y'all about something. Bust it. Word up. L.A., L.A., big city and dreams. Tragedy Gaddafi and all them? Listen, let me tell you something. I feel like I'm qualified to say what I'm about to say because I don't think that there is a New York rapper left that love L.A. as much as I do. Like, I have debates with my friends all the time. Niggas telling me about all the reasons why they don't like L.A., right? I'm like... I've had, my luck has always been too, I, my, ex, my experiences are too great. All of my biggest checks came from LA. I had some of the, my daughter's mothers from LA. Like all, all of these great things in my life can't, started in LA, we, right? We love you out here. I know, right? Yeah, so, a lot of us fuck with you out so, here. So when people tell me, damn, Rock, you fuck with the, you going to LA? I be like, bro, and I'm trying to, and I end up having damn near real argument with a nigga because he feel the way he feel and he got facts to back it up with. So my, my 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 thoughts go to LA. What's going on out here, people? I was about to ask you, is that why people be saying that to you? Because of pretty much what's happening. What's going on out here? Like and this you all right, we we all familiar with this dude Charleston White, right? Yeah. We yeah, know of who course. he is, right? Like so I like my man was watching him religiously for a while. And me, I've been at a point in my life for a couple of years, for several years, where I'm like, I that shit sound like a whole bunch of negativity, a whole bunch of stupid shit, a whole bunch of I'm not dealing with nothing. I don't I don't I don't want to hear that. Don't don't send me those clips. But recently I stumbled across a clip of his where he said he hates LA, right? He said they killed, he said, y'all killed PMB Rock, Nipsey, Tupac, Biggie, Pop Smoke, blah, 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 blah. And I couldn't, I couldn't feel something like I couldn't disagree with that. I clicked on it, right? And I'm watching what he's, you know, and I'm watching the whole shit, and I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling the feeling. What he's saying, what he's saying makes sense. You understand what I'm saying? As far as like, you know, he's talking about all this check-in shit, and y'all couldn't protect Nipsey, and blah blah blah. Valid points, whatever, right? But I said to myself, I, I needed to ask LA myself, what's going on? What makes me so special? 
because I've been coming out here for years and I feel nothing but love. Is there something I need to tell people back home that they need to stop doing this something? Is it to stop wearing jewelry? Is that it? Well, the, like, that, the jewelry is a, here's the that's thing. That's definitely a thing. Here, here's the thing. That's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. I'm, but I'll tell you. Because wolves going to eat, right? Yeah, I, I, I'll, I get I'll tell that you part. like this. L.A. has been one of the most dangerous cities. People know this. Mm -hmm. and, and just because it looks nice, you know what I mean? Right. When you when you in the hood in Brooklyn, when mm -hmm. you like when you go to like East Flatbush or you know these mm -hmm. you can tell you in the motherfucking hood. Right. A lot of neighborhoods in LA yeah. look nice as hell. But look, you for years you, I was you wouldn't know you in the for hood. For years I was coming out here. It wasn't until 2003 a nigga drove me through the hoods and I realized how how close I was to the hoods when I would be in Hollywood. That's what, yeah. Like, I had no idea how close it really was. But that's because, you know, I'm not like, like, rest in peace to take off, right? But you know what I'm not going to do nowhere? And I'm not trying to, I'm yeah, not trying to, I'm, you're not going to catch me at a dice game in some other city. M most deaf. M right? Most deaf. Like, I'm not saying that, he, I'm not trying to blame the victim. No. Yeah, 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 but I'm yeah. just saying, like, I move a certain way. It's just certain things. Like, I that wouldn't. Might, that might I'm, be your answer. Though, right. For what I, th you I think asking. that is. You that that is. Kind of. But just, like, so something to keep in mind, because LA has always been super slimy, right? Mm -hmm. And social media now puts it more on blast. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more rappers coming through here. But here's really what happened to take things to the next level. You know, we had this thing called EDD and PPP loans out here mm. where during the pandemic, people were getting extra ki kidnapped. A, a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's people that had never worked a day in their lives getting 20, 30, 40 bands, right? Mm -hmm. When that money ran out, after everyone was used to having more money, mm -hmm. it got very slimy. Yeah, schools I were, mean, and not schools were spending their money beforehand on guns. Mm -hmm. All them guns got put to use after the fact. Right. That's why you saw an increase in the smash and grab robberies. On mm -hmm. you feel me, residential burglaries came back mm -hmm. again after they had kind of subsided for a minute. Yeah. And then the you know the the funk between the sets really got set it's, off it's, way more. So that's it's an economic thing too. Like you gotta realize too, the cost of living has changed completely mm -hmm. since it been. And LA has always been fucked up, like he said. But if you look at LA right now, combined with the inflation and what's going on, and how expensive gas is and groceries mm -hmm. and everything, people are not doing good right now. So when they see somebody who's doing really fucking good from mm -hmm. out of town, not giving a fuck. I feel like that's how the opportunities present themselves in a lot of scenarios. You clearly know how to move. Well, you know what I mean? Here's something I, 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 that, that popped into my mind in connection with this thought, right? When I thought it, like, it's not a new thought. It was like, one time I saw on YouTube somewhere, it was some sort of, I'm, I don't know what it was actually called, but it was some sort of West Coast Summit or something like that. It was probably like, West Coast All-Stars. It was like a meeting. It was like a big barbecue, like in a, oh, in no. a park, right? Oh, okay, never mind. And yeah, West Coast Summit. Exactly. And Snoop was there. Snoop and all. was there. The yeah, yeah, Summit. right. Yeah, yeah. West and, Coast Summit. And I heard Snoop say in that interview, "We gotta he was come like, together as we one. We gotta West. come together yeah. as one." But he was also saying shit like, "We got all these niggas coming out here. They fucking our bitches. They smoking our weed. They doing la 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 la. They coming out here and they living better than. We gotta put a stop to all that." I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Right. Right. And I think that was Snoop said. I, I believe that was it, it, it that was, was Snoop. It was Snoop, right? And I feel like a lot of times we as rappers don't know how powerful our words are. You know what I'm saying? 100%. And I'm not blaming him for doing that, but I'm saying that he. I, it would be nice if he gave another speech. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Like, made, made he a, just cleared it up. Made a, a bit. made another little speech. Or that something. was young Snoop to be fair. You understand what I'm saying? saying? Like, <laughs> absolutely. But because look, look, like I'm doing an interview. You know, I'm doing interviews, and people are telling me how my lyrics affected them. Like things that I said affected them. That, that I was completely unaware of. You, gotta you understand know that. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like Talib was just telling me how like he learned about putting a towel under the door in the hotels and shit like that <laughs> from my you're, album. Yeah, from what you're saying. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I I never considered that. Like, I you understand? So shit like that, people be listening and being influenced. You understand what I'm I saying? I think this goes again to tie back tie it back in. Like I think the labels understand the power, but the rappers don't really know. Right. And that's why else would you see without dropping names specific rappers being asked, do they do the drugs that they rap about? And them saying no, they don't. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. very harmful. I yeah. mean, at the end of the day It's crazy, man. At the end of the day New York, LA were the two biggest cities, mm -hmm. you know, like if you add Atlanta to that conversation, we're the yeah. three cities that made the most impact on hip hop culture. Yeah. 
you know, New York's obviously the mecca, and mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see a lot more unity between yeah. all these re Absolutely. people like us that travel everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna be in New York in two weeks. I love what Crooked and Joel are doing. Right, yeah, shout love out what to Crooked and Joel. Same Absolutely, here, we, we definitely mm -hmm. respect. Uh, that. Unfortunately, and we, salute to Snoop too. I ain't, I ain't want to just throw nah, you off the bus like that. It's, it's a good point, and I would like <laughs> there should be You're another conversation right. before um, before tensions escalate further. But <laughs> with that being said, unfortunately, we gotta wrap this up. Is there any any final thoughts? Anything you wanna? Any lines you wanna push before we sky up out of here? Uh, the uh, the album is called Ether Rocks. It's fully produced by Ron Browns. We have vinyl. You know, we got CDs, we, it's everywhere. We got, you know, digitally and all of that physical. And um, it's on American B-Boy Records. Um, get familiar with what we doing. Um, Rusty Jukes' Rockness Monster album is in the works. It's oh, called, that's fire, bro. Shouts to Rusty Jukes. It's called, it's called Crownsville. He one of them ones. Crownsville, yeah, 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 that's our baby boy right there. Um, what else? Am, am I forgetting some shit, Neff? Let me know. Don't, don't. Oh yeah, we got a new single that just dropped off of Ether Rocks it's featuring Steel and Rusty Jukes. It's called Fire. Shark Tank, and I went bananas on that. We got a video <laughs> too. Yeah, it's out. The video just Need dropped a couple of days verse ago. From you, man. Yeah, See let's get me to in it. The streets, bro. I break your teeth up and take your beeper type of shit. Come on, yeah. man. We had another crazy yeah. ass. Verse. Appreciate that. That I'm flattered. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, you know like, we know your like, shit, like, man. Real talk. <laughs> oh yeah, I can recite entire verses. Yo, bro. you don't always know that though because you got to talk to the person, right? Because look. I, I live in this body, right? So, you know, I go around, walk around the world, and you come across, you'd be surprised how many people you come across who have no idea. Next to snap a neck, big rock holes, <laughs> big R-O-C-K, <laughs> send them seeds to me and squads of three say. You feel me? Come you on. You don't know like, that yeah, this yeah, nigga yeah. know those bars, you though. A lot me? of people, you know, you go someplace and they treat you crazy at the door of the club. you like... That, you know that's my song they playing right there. All right, it's not my song. It's my friend's song. No, it's Soundboy Berry. Like the, and they treat you... so. It's, it it creates an air of, hum, of humility. You know that everybody don't just know that. You know, a nigga don't just have to know. You know what I mean? So, nah, yeah. these are your flowers right here. Man. Yeah. yeah. Them, brothers. With that being said, disaster. Here, you already know. Let's you know. Rock Nest Monster, and we about this. B b b b b b monster. Out this biatch.